Joshua. I wanted to start with my sign, but my sign is a bit of a nasty word. But fortunately, my rising sign is Gemini. And Geminis have clever tongues and an amazing ability to obscure the facts with stimulating and imaginative chatter. So it will be completely factless, anything I tell you today. I'm going to tell you about a number of meetings that I had in my life since, I say, my 40th birthday. And those meetings really changed my life. I'll show you. But first, why is a very efficient word, why? Uh, when I started my uh, job as finance director at a PR company, my first management uh, meeting, someone said, we need consultants. And I said, why? There wasn't really a clear answer to that question. But everybody was quite sure, we need consultants. And as it was my job to improve management information systems, I thought, let's find out. And I won't get into details, but I can assure you, we didn't need consultants. Children have uh, the same ability of using the word why. Yes, they can use it in, in the, the nasty sense of the word as why do I have to eat carrots and why do I have to eat sprouts? but they also teach you to use it in a way that a, c a, a child can teach you to be curious, to be willing to learn, to discover things. Why do you push the button? Why do you go by train? Why do you have to go to work? Why do you do what you do? Why do you do what you do? Why do I do what I do? Kafka said, by passionately believing in something that still does not exist, we create it. The non-existent is anything we have not sufficiently desired. There's truth in that, don't you think? Years back, I was in a job, and it wasn't really my cup of tea, content-wise, colleague-wise, organization-wise, strategy-wise, clearly unhappy. And <laughs> actually, I saw that after three weeks. Um, and after six months, I decided, I'm going to quit. This is not me. I'm going to look for something else. OK, what's something else? So in my hunt for a new job, I, um, I entered a woodworking course in Friesland. And as soon as I started the course, I thought, wow, I found the else. And the else is actually beech, or birch, or maple, or oak. It's wood. And this is just one picture, but c I can show you a thousand. The smell, the feel, the look, and anything you can create with wood is wonderful. So I decided to become a cabinet maker. Did I have the skills? Education? Tools? Workshop? Well, actually, no, none of it. But trust me, I knew that I wanted to become a cabinet maker. So, I did become a cabinet maker. Four years ago I started, and I'm not really unsuccessful. And I told you about the changes, and what you can see in this picture is actually one of the changes in my life is the dress code. It used to be me, the new me. You get used to that as well. After a year of, of cabinet making, um, I noticed that cabinet making is physically 
challenging. Um, and of course, in your own company, it's a lot more insecure than just having a paid job. Uh, so I decided to do something besides cabinet making, also to meet other people and talk on different subjects, but would. Um, and there was an opening at a theatre in The Hague, De Regentes. Beautiful building. Um, it's a former swimming pool. And this picture is actually the swimming pool as it used to be, but there's a new floor in it. And it's a beautiful theatre. I fell in love with the building the first time I had a tour. I became head of finance and did that for a number of years. And it was nice being in a theatre, the cultural world. Every four years, cultural institutions in The Hague, actually in the Netherlands, have to apply for funding. It's a period of four years and you get funding, you need to write a plan, what are you going to do with the funds, um, and that takes you to the next couple of four years. So in 2011, there was some excitement at the theatre because, yes, we were going to write a new plan. The managing director said, no, thank you, I can write it, and no help needed. So. Staff was tiny little bit disappointed, but ah, uh, what the heck, we just move on and see what happens. Um, we handed in the plan. Was it a good plan? I doubt it. Was it a bad plan? The advisory committee gave an advice of bringing back funding from 800,000 back to nil. So you might conclude that it was actually a bad plan. Um, and you can imagine what that does to an organisation. I mean, people working there, and some, some of them have been working there for over 15 years, suddenly realising that this is the end of my career in this theatre. In June, management decided to close down the operation. And at the same time, a colleague of mine and I s thought, no, we're not closing down. We were going to write our own plan, do it for ourselves. So, asking the managing director, can we write a plan? Yes, yeah, sure, you can write a plan. And we wrote a plan. Handed it in, City Hall, August 31, one day before the deadline. And then um, we were in an awful lot of trouble because as soon as management found out that we handed in the plan, the world was a bit too small. We were forbidden to communicate on the plan. No way. <laughs> we had written the plan, it was a good plan. So, there was some legal hassle, nasty conversations, lousy mails, long letters, lawyers all over, and it ended up with a request to clear our desks, hand in the keys and leave the building permanently. As you can imagine, sleepless nights, headaches. Did we ever consider quitting? No, never, never ever. Because the building, the podium, starting artists, the cultural environment in The Hague, the neighborhood that the building is in, no way that we were going to lose that. So, we kept on, and March 12th, the city of The Hague decided to give the new Regentes the opportunity to start a new theatre. Luckily, we had a logo already. And just to invite you all, we're opening next Wednesday. And it will be... <laughs> It will be a brewing party and we've got room for all of you, don't worry. Why did we go on? I met an old friend recently, a couple of weeks back, and he said, I thought you were in South Africa. South Africa, South Africa. Oh yes, once I had a plan to start a bed and breakfast with a friend in South Africa. 
and we were actually actually looking at properties in, in the Pretoria area and the Durban area. But we didn't do it. Makes you wonder, why didn't I do that? And looking back on, on Kafka, I think I thought that the operative word in the saying is believing, but it's not. It's passionately. By passionately believing, you create things. Because, you know, passion turns believing into action. Passion creates. And as soon as you're in action mode, raise your steps in again. Because you need to think before you create. Solely believing doesn't create it. You have to act. And that means ratio. Because you know the how of creating consists of planning, budgeting, knowing the numbers, focus, thorough thinking. It means marketing skills. Present the plan, sell the plan, present yourself, sell yourself. It means lots of time, hard work, patience. Trust me, if you want to sell something to a city council, patience. But most of all, you need a team, you need support. Keep them together, bring them together. The most intriguing of it all is these meetings, you don't have to look for them. They find you. They're on your way. You run into them. The only thing is, if you passionate believe, you can create it. And it's really, really, really enjoyable. So, actually, my advice to all of you is, if you meet your theater, enjoy the meeting. Thank you.